The Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant is in Washington today for key meetings with top Biden administration officials. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan sitting down with Gallant amid very growing tensions between Israel and the United States. CNN's Fareed Zakari is joining us right now with some analysis. He's also the author of a brand new, excellent must-read new book just published today. Age of Revolutions, there's the cover. Progress and Backlash from 1600 to the President. Uh, Fareed, we're going to get to your book shortly, but let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now. You and I have covered U.S.-Israeli relations for many years. Very important meetings today uh, between the U.S. and Israel here in Washington. The Defense Minister meeting with the U.S. Defense Secretary and the President's National Security Advisor. How does this increasingly tense relationship between the Biden administration and the Netanyahu government complicate requests from Netanyahu's government for more U.S. weapons? I think it's an inflection point, really. It's a big, it's a big uh, watershed moment in U.S.-Israeli relations because this is a fight that Bibi Netanyahu has almost brought upon himself. You almost wonder at some level whether he was spoiling for a fight because the Biden administration has, and most Israelis feel this way, has been more supportive of Israel in this conflict than virtually any previous administration has in Israel's other moments of crisis. So the Biden administration has supported them militarily, materially, morally, but they have kept asking for certain concessions, you know, pay more attention to civilian casualties, let humanitarian aid go through, allow for temporary ceasefires so you can have more of that aid go through. And now this issue of Rafa, whether or not you really need to go through. And I think Bibi Netanyahu almost wants this fight. He has a very extreme uh, right wing coalition. It sh it, he, he seems to be, you know, kind of zealously defending the, the, the hardline position in doing all this. But by doing this, what he is doing is he's wrecking the trust that has built over decades between Israel and the United States. And what he's doing is creating a, 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 an idea that the United States can be pro Israel without being pro Bibi. Israel can be a close ally, but Bibi Netanyahu might not be a close ally. Important points you're making. I want to turn to your brand new book, Age of Revolutions, in which you write this, and I'm quoting you now, in the book you write, when you consider the multitude of dramatic changes in the world today, we are living through one of the most revolutionary ages in history. Lay that out for us, Fareed. Well, think about what we've gone through. We, you know, we are living through it so that we don't realize it. But in the last 30 or 40 years, we have gone through a massive expansion of globalization where something like two and a half billion to three billion people have joined the, the world trading system. That's all of China, all of India, most of Latin America, large parts of Africa. Have suddenly all become, they're all playing the same game now. You look at the technology world. We've created a brand new digital world. I mean, think about what the world looked like before that. We are now living in a world where the biggest companies in the world are all these new companies that didn't exist 20, 25 years ago. Think about the reality of the identity revolution that has taken place. Take one piece of it, women. Women have been emancipated to, you know, from being second-class citizens which they were for thousands and thousands of years. And all this has happened in the last 30 or 40 years. So we're going through the acceleration, the disruption that all that causes, but we're also going through, and this is what I talk a lot of in my book about, the backlash, the, the feeling that, you know, this is all going too far too fast. And there are a lot of people who say, don't worry, I'll, 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 I'll stop the world, you can get off. I'll take you back to when you were more comfortable. You know, the most important word in, in Donald Trump's slogan is, make America great again. I'm going to take you back when it was safe and you didn't have to, you didn't feel so disoriented. It's interesting because in your new book, Age of Revolutions, you also write about the rise of populism. And you write this, and, and I'm quoting you now, one sign of a revolutionary age is that politics gets scrambled along, along new lines. What kind of revolution uh, have politics here in the United States undergone in recent years? And is that happening elsewhere as well? So the, the most uh, powerful indication of this is think about what the Republican Party stood for under Ronald Reagan. You and I both remember those days. Ronald Reagan stood for limited government, balanced budgets, free markets, free trade, 
spreading democracy abroad, great pride in that, uh, and very, very open and receptive to immigration. Think about what Donald Trump's Republican Party stands for. Literally every one of those things I said, Trump is basically the opposite on, on almost all of those. He's a protectionist. He doesn't like free trade. He doesn't like immigrants. He's for big government. He spent more money than anybody in his, in his four years. So that's the transformation we're going through. And it shows you that, you know, the old left-right categories no longer apply. We're in a new age. Yep, important points. Fareed Zakaria, thank you very, very much. Thanks for writing this book. Be sure to, to our viewers, be sure to check out Fareed's new book. There you see the cover once again, Age of Revolutions, must read, as I said.